start with the West Virginia Mountaineers. And West Virginia last year, interesting team for sure. Neil Brown and what they were doing, uh, how how they were able to be successful with Jarrett Dagey as their quarterback was interesting. The team, I think, was a lot better than, and, and obviously the postgame win expectancy would not tell you that. I'm going to go on and pull this up on the screen here. And you can see uh, postgame win expectancy, 5.93 and 6.07. They lost the bowl game but they were 6-6 six and six in the regular season. This team, as far as what was expected of them last year, I think it was about this, about a bowl game, somewhere around there. I don't have high expectations this season. And that's a little strange considering, you know, they've got uh, JT Daniels coming in at quarterback, etc. But number 125 in returning production, that's 46%. They had a lot of high-profile guys that transferred out uh, the they lost some guys to uh, the NFL, etc. cetera. Um, you know, lost linebacker, lost defensive line, just uh, problems. Now, you bring in Graham Harrell, and that could be the shot in the arm that you need along with JT Daniels, maybe. But, you know, the numbers last year weren't exactly great. They were number 107 in turnover margin, number 73 PPA margin, uh, 79 net points per drive. Like, it just wasn't overall great. Uh, projected SP plus record is four and eight here, and I've kind of gone back and forth on my record prediction. But we'll we'll talk about it first. We'll talk about the team uh, on offense. New OC, obviously Graham Harrell. We talked about that former OC at USC and at North Texas. He was JT Daniels' second offensive coordinator at USC, and apparently he and JT Daniels got along pretty well because when it came time for Daniels to transfer again away from Georgia he decided to go with Harold to West Virginia. Uh, in seven seasons as a head coach, Neil Brown, who actually moved up the coaching ladder based on his offense, uh, he's never had a top 70 efficiency offense. Now, that is insane. Now, I would imagine if you have at least some kind of playmakers or whatever, and so long as JT Daniels stays healthy, that he and Graham Harrell could fix that. They could be a top 70 efficiency offense. But, obviously, we'll see. They do have four good offensive linemen back, but the wide receiver right and the running back, Letty Brown, are gone. Daniels could help the wide receivers, Ford, Wheaton, James, and Prather. Uh, the biggest question here is, can JT Daniels stay healthy? Like He had that one season where he was supposed to be still a high school senior, and he was able to play through most of that. I think he went out just a little bit, nothing crazy. But, at beginning of his next year, Went out with an injury. Uh, the, basically, the whole time he was at Georgia, out with an injury. If he can be healthy, like he can obviously be a good quarterback. I think I've said obviously like four times now. Maybe it's not so obvious. Uh, <laughs> but it, if he can stay healthy, then I think this could be a good offense. It, it could be good. Uh, they weren't last year. Number 67 in PPA per drive, uh, 52 in rushing success rate, number 68 in passing success rate, and then... Offensive explosive rate was number 86. They weren't able to generate a ton of uh, explosive plays. When you look at the defense, this is the other side of it. The defense is actually what made them uh, pretty good last year. Number 54 in PPA per drive, 54 in rushing success rate. Their passing success rate on defense was number 82. That was pretty bad. Uh, but they were number 24 in defensive explosive play rate allowed. So... They stopped some of the big plays from happening. They were able to win some games that maybe you wouldn't expect them to. Jordan Leslie remains as the defensive coordinator after being a Broyles Award nominee. I'm curious, what about these numbers show you that he should have been a nominee? Right? It's not that I think that he's bad by any stretch of the imagination. There was just nothing stand out so much about this. Uh, you got nine defenders that had 500-plus snaps in 2021, only two of them return. At defensive tackle Stills, the defensive end Austin and the linebacker Bartlett are studs on this team, and they're going to be leaders for the seven transfers and the three Juco guys that, they're got, uh, that they got coming in. Defensive line does have experience with Stills and Austin, like I said, but I'm not necessarily sold on the linebackers. There's talent there, uh, but I'm not sold just yet, and the secondary is just a complete crapshoot. A ton of transfers, etc. Just, we're just going to have to figure it out as we get there. Uh, keys to the season here. This team is projected to win 
as as I said, by SP Plus uh, four and eight, um, they are projected favorites in five games roundabout. Uh, we talk about the offense like it was putrid last year, uh, but they weren't that bad. They were number sixty four in scoring opportunities, number thirty eight in points per. And a scoring opportunity, by the way, for those that do not know, uh, drives that get inside the opponent 40-yard line. Uh, they were number 67 in PPA per drive. I mentioned that. The offense wasn't awful, but there's a lot that's changing. So we we got to see what they're going to be like. And again, the defensive numbers were pedestrian here. 54 PPA per drive, number 82 in scoring opportunities allowed, number 66 in success rate allowed overall. Eh, like I, I don't know what the expectations are for this team. Like, is is Brown going to be in trouble if they end up, you know, four and eight, five and seven, somewhere around there? Uh, the returning production is just awful. Thirty nine percent on defense. That's number one twenty seven out of one hundred and thirty one teams. Uh, number one hundred in offensive returning production. That's fifty two percent. You know, the roster strength is okay, but the defensive side is the weak suit. I'm. I'm really curious here. Their win total is five and a half, and it's juiced to the over at a minus one thirty-five. I've got them at five and seven, and that's actually changing one of the games. I've got them winning over Kansas State towards the end of the season, but I could see them losing that game as well. I've got a win over TCU in here. I've got a win at Virginia Tech, and then Kansas and Towson. I've got those as well. I, I think five and seven sounds about right. I, I changed up. I had Kansas State at nine and three. I feel like they are more likely to go eight and four. But uh, but I I like Neil Brown. I like what he did at Troy, and I like what he's trying to do at West Virginia. Uh, but with without a ton of returning production, and I don't know how much I like the roster strength compared to some of these other teams in the Big Twelve. I'm gonna roll with five and seven on them. I uh, I wonder about Neil Brown. I wonder what the expectation is for him going forward, but, eh, you know, we'll see. We'll see. I, I think five and seven, four and eight, somewhere around there, maybe not make a bowl game this year, but set yourself up to where you can next season. So we'll we'll see what ends up happening with that. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.